What's going on folks? EJR here again. Today's episode, I'm going to be talking to you about quick shifters. The difference between OEM and race tools. And I don't mean a physical quick shifter, I'm talking about the ECU parameters that controls it. Alright. Warren's bike here is running the OEM quick shifter. My bike is running the Woolwich quick shifter. I learned the hard way that it is not needed. All you need is the license for race tools. Unfortunately, it's an extra $260, which does kind of suck for a license. Now, in my last video, I mentioned that I had something for you guys that you're really going to like. And what that is, is details on Warren's bike doing a before and after back-to-back -back runs on, on the draggy to show you just how much faster these bikes get when you speed up the quick shifter and make it work the way it should work. All right? Um, I'm quite impressed myself just seeing the difference back to back. I knew it was a lot, but seeing it in front of my own eyes through GPS was pretty, uh, pretty crazy to me. But I'm also going to show you some videos that trigger me out there of other people losing races or having close races due to slow quick shifters. And I'm actually going to show you on Frank's bike that I did a while back. Uh, just the comparison between how he delivered it to me with the shifter and how he got it back. Now, obviously, I did some more things to Frank's bike besides the shifter, but uh, in this case, you're going to very easily see what his bike does every time I shift it, both before and after I tuned it. All right, so I'm going to go into more details with you about that in just a minute. All right, jumping on the computer here. I've got a stock map open for a ZX-10, it's a Euro one, but it really doesn't matter for what I'm about to show you. Alright, I get a lot of questions about race tools and what it is and can they install it, etc. It, it's not a physical thing. It's, as you can see, a tab in Woolwich, alright, that allows you to directly control the ECU through milliseconds, as most aftermarket quick shifters would. But you have to pay extra for this, okay? This is $260 just to be able to use this, and it's per ECU. Typically, if you don't, let's pop into advanced settings here. Gears 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. These are actually the shifts that you would have to control the quick shifter uh, if, you didn't, if you weren't using race tools. Now, this is a measurement in voltage, or so I've been told by uh, Archer, by Justin, etc. Okay, and by reducing this, you're reducing voltage. People get this confused and think that it's actually milliseconds. 60 is not in milliseconds. Unfortunately, this is a completely made up number. So what it really is, you just kind of have to guess and figure out what works. That being said, what this starts doing is it'll start missing gears long before it ever shifts as fast as you can get the adjustment right in race tools. All right. So I leave this all at 100 now. I use race tools. I pop into race tools. Okay, let's go to enable quick shifter. And now you have an actual map that's in milliseconds. Now this is the factory map and it's it's pretty cringe, not going to lie. 70 milliseconds wide open throttle shifts. This map is meant to be changed, no question. All right, now this is part of the bad news about race tools so far. It tends to ruin your part throttle quick shifter. Now, if you're one of those guys that likes to ride around town and never pull the clutch in, never pull the throttle, just move the shifter, it goes into the next gear, downshift, etc. Race tools, as of right now, seems to ruin that. Um, on my bike, personally, I don't even turn the quick shifter on now until 8,000 RPM. Now, I'm still working on a part throttle map to make it as smooth as it is without using race tools. Uh, it's taking its sweet time, though. It's very jerky. Um, I've so far found that pulling a lot of the kill time out has made it a lot smoother. The, the, the kill times are way too long for part throttle and race tools. So, I just wanted to give everybody a little heads up about this, that if you did choose to go the route of race tools, okay, you might not like the part throttle shifting. It's not smooth. Not at least it's not as smooth as the way it's stock. All right. So you basically, right as of right now, 
you have to pick between fast, wide open throttle shifts and shitty part throttle shifts, or smooth part throttle shifts and shitty wide open throttle shifts. It kind of is what it is at this point. But most quick shifters, you don't even have smooth part throttle shifting. That's actually a luxury that's come around in the past few years on a lot of super sports. All right. But I wanted to go over this with you quick before I showed you guys videos in regards to how much faster Warren's bike got um, and a couple other people, anonymous people out there. Here's some videos. <laughs> Alright, now that you guys have seen some of the differences between the slow shifter and the fast shifter in video, I want to show you the numbers on GPS and how that looks. Alright, this is the last poll we did that I showed you in the other video. Okay, 449, 60 to 130, 60 to 170, 1048, 60 to 180, 1306, etc, etc. Alright, now just flashing in my quick shifter map through race tools, back to back, same road, Nothing changed, just the quick shifter. This is the difference. 412, 60 to 130, 877, 60 to 170, 60 to 180 in 1110, and 60 to 190 in 1481. Now putting them side by side, look at that difference. All right, diving a little deeper into 60 to 180 specifically, okay? This was beforehand. 1306 seconds and 2657 feet. After the quick shifter change, 11.1 seconds, 2228 feet. That's 429 feet difference. Focus right here on the orange line. All right, that's acceleration or G. Um, notice there's huge interruptions in there. Those are the shifts. Look at before and after. It's a lot smoother. All right. That's huge. One thing I wanted to note for a lot of you guys who race 9 tenths, especially the guys in Florida, who are all about the mile an hour, all right? Look at the times at the top, okay? It took us 16.97 seconds to get to 190 miles an hour. With the quick shifter fixed, it took us 16.76 seconds to get to 193 miles an hour, okay? That's three miles an hour more top speed in less time. But all right, that about wraps up this video. I hope you guys enjoyed the information and stay tuned for the next one.